Okay, let's go ahead and get ourselves started for today. Today we are going to do a couple exciting things. We are going to talk about the final project for the class and get you set up on your way in terms of what has to happen there. So we want to spend some time just sort of getting you launched in the right direction and making sure you have the right expectations about how to get this done. Um, so we'll start with that and then we're going to go ahead and turn our attention to using our models for actually doing cost estimating. So how we can actually start pulling some cost in estimating information out of the models and uh, like uh, come up with some preliminary cost feedback on a design. But let us go ahead and start with the whole notion of just what we need to do for the assignment. And if you want to go out to the coursework drive, out there under session 18, you'll find the assignment right up. So let's walk it through together. Okay, what we are going to do for assignment four is actually go through and work with the same basic building that you worked with for assignment three, but kind of take on in a kind of what about it, a little further in terms of like trying to resolve things that were going on there. As we work with assignment three and we started putting a structural system into there and we started putting a mechanical system and a piping system into the building, we noticed there were all sorts of different problems. And this is sort of very typical early on in preliminary design that as different disciplines go ahead and do their work, things don't necessarily resolve together because everyone's optimizing from their own perspective. And ultimately it all has to kind of come back together and get resolved. So what we want to do for this assignment is actually put you in a slightly different role. For this assignment, we want you to actually go ahead and start with that building, but take on the role of a project consulting team, okay? One whose job is to go ahead and look at the structural system as well as the building envelope features. So there are a lot of things we could be looking at, but specifically we're going to be looking at those two aspects of this preliminary design. The structural of the system, which hopefully you've already taken a look at and done some design work with, and the building envelope, that is the exterior walls, the glazing, the roof, it's the exterior surfaces that are actually meeting the outside environment, okay? And really take a look at those to go through and advise on really what the features should be of those things, as well as to provide some preliminary cost feedback about those things so that we can use an analysis of sort of the baseline costs versus the cost of some alternatives to figure out really what we would recommend doing for improving the building. That's kind of the high level thing that what's going on here. So we're looking at those things, we're going to provide a little cost information and ultimately try to make some recommendations. We're also going to go ahead and think about the uh, issue of the construction sequence and how this might actually go together. Again, focusing very much on the structural system and the building envelope. There's an awful lot more going on that would ultimately be sequenced. But for right now, we'll focus on those systems because they're fairly linear and straightforward about how you have to sequence those things. So that's what we're going to start looking at. In terms of how you're going to approach this, we would like to have you work as a little team of three, okay, with each member of your team taking on a specific project role. So think ahead now. We're going to talk about whatever the roles are going to do, about how you would describe yourself or how you would want to go ahead and work on this project. Do you think of yourself more in terms of doing the architectural design work, the structural design work, or more the construction management role? And we'll talk about what each of those different things are. And ultimately, I want to have you come up and sort of assign yourself to one of the different tasks. And we're going to try and pair up teams based on sort of how people are assigned to the tasks. So the thing to do here is try to combine yourself together with people with opposite interests or complementary interests. If you're a structural engineer, don't grab for your immediate friends that you've worked with on all your other projects. Go ahead and find a construction student to work with and an architecture student because you get the best balance of skills that way. And the way we're actually all distributed in the class, there are enough structural engineers and construction management students to go around. So if we distribute ourselves a little bit, we'll actually sort of have all the different skills covered by people who you know, ascribe to that as their primary like a skill set. So that should work out if you're willing to be a little bit flexible. Okay, to get you started, we've actually put the uh, a Revit 2010 building model of that design out on the coursework folder in session 18. Go ahead and what download this new version. Even if you already have the architectural model from the last assignment, go ahead and download the new version of the architectural model 
Um, your structural model and your MEP model will already link to it because the geometry hasn't fundamentally changed. But this version of the model that's out there now has rooms put into it for the building performance analysis. So that stuff's already stuffed in there. So go ahead and grab that. That's about the only thing that's changed between the old version and the new version. So any linked model should still link just fine in terms of the geometry. Okay. Um, forming your project teams. Let's talk about that. Okay, so your task is to get together with two other members in the class and form a team. Again, you'll have these primary roles. Someone will be thinking about the architectural design issues, structural construction. Yeah, try and form like uh, teams that balance out the things. We're going to have the sign-up list here. We'll go ahead and make that a little more formal than the whiteboard version in a little while. But try to get your teams formed prior to next Tuesday. Let's see if we can get this squared away before yeah, today, Friday, sometime Monday. Let's see if we can get it done before next Tuesday's class, because there will always be a few people off the edges who just need team members, and they're looking for folks. And you know, we don't want to be next Thursday and Friday looking for teams. So if you can, go ahead and think about what your role is. Just put yourself under one of the columns, and we'll sort of advertise that around and yeah, see if people can kind of pair up. So in terms of doing that, if you already know someone that you want to work with, go ahead and put yourself on the same line. If you don't know, but you know that you do want to go ahead and focus on structure, just go ahead and put yourself in that column without anyone on the same line. Because we're just trying to pair people up at this point. Okay, so whatever kind of works. And you'll find that you could actually work on this somewhat independently. There's really discrete things that each individual person can work on separately, but at some point you'll have to get together for like a two-hour meeting to really go through and just kind of do some of the trade-offs and figure out what you want to do. Uh, you know, as a strategy compromising between two different perspectives. Okay, so it's not like you're going to be attached by the hip for the next week together, because it would be really hard to do. You're just going to go ahead and, like, uh, after you get some preliminary feedback, go through and uh, do some contrasting. So let's talk about what everyone's doing independently. And as you approach these tasks, actually, there's no hard and fast rule that says the person that has the structural engineer hat has to be doing all these different things. You can sort of trade that off whatever makes the most sense internally to your team. There's just three different things you sort of have to approach as a team. Okay, So the structural consultant is going to be responsible for doing that modeling of the structural framing elements, which you've probably already done for assignment three. So that part's easy. You've already got that part done. Okay, But what you want to do beyond that is add some structural analysis features in Revit structure. So put in some boundary conditions under those columns to make sure they're not moving in space. Kind of think about your joint connections. And for the most part, by default, they're all showing up as pins. You'll probably want to go ahead and think about whether some of those need to lock. Uh, put some live loads and dead loads on there. Okay, So you will need to go ahead and sort of put some sort of live load for the floor and some live load for the roof system. Okay, um, Dead loads, yeah, go ahead and make some assumptions there in terms of like putting some of that in there. Analyze that in a package like eTabs. Then ultimately, I want you to make some recommendations for the sizes of the key framing elements at each floor. OK, so let's think about that. For these major framing elements, you don't need to go through and analyze every individual beam separately. What's going to happen is at each of the different floor levels or in each different area of the building, there are going to be a couple of, oh, I'll call them worst case scenarios, that will really kind of dominate the design for that entire section of the building. Okay, so. Go ahead and choose what you think those are. There's a couple, most of the beams are almost all the same size. There's a few that are especially long. Those might be good ones to look at. You, know, you might want to look at, oh, the columns at each of the different floor levels, because there's a different amount of loading on each of the different columns. So go ahead and come up with you know, some analysis of the beams, uh, the structural framing elements. You, know, you could probably get by with analyzing, I'd say, like six to eight framing elements and get done with what you need to here and kind of get what you really want to have. Yeah, you know, get, uh, get to as the point of your recommendation. And what we'd like you specifically to look at is this whole notion of you know what would be the impact of just using the same framing elements at all three of the different levels versus trying to do something where you're changing the framing elements on the different levels to optimize for the loads that are there. Again, there's not really a very big difference. The beams pretty much have the same loads at every level. The columns have a little bit different loads at the different levels. But we want you to sort of get at that, and then. Based on that sort of analysis, you're going to do a couple different things. You're going to work with uh, the rest of your team to figure out what we're going to do about all those bracing elements, those bracing elements which are coming down in the middle of the windows. Okay, So just 
work with your designers to figure out really are you going to move some windows or are you going to sort of do something with your bracing like change it to a moment frame or kind of shift something around but just come up with some recommendation for how we want to accommodate that bracing okay and also think about the cost impact of these two different strategies you know is we do go ahead and try to optimize the member sizes really how much money are we really going to save by doing this Okay, and to do that, you'll probably want to be working with your construction manager who will help you be able to go through and figure out what the cost of your steel is. So you can sort of trade that off. Okay, in a similar sort of light, let's talk about what we want to do from the building performance standpoint. Okay, from a building <laughs> performance standpoint, I think of really the architect is really kind of taking the lead on this one, but again, it could be whoever wants to. The idea is to use Green Building Studio to evaluate the thermal performance and the energy consumption of the building, but really specifically focusing on those envelope elements, the glazing, the walls, and the roofs, because those are the big ones that have the big effect on what you do. So using uh, Green Building Studio, figure out what the optimal orientation for the building is. That's something you can do with design alternatives where by default it's facing the south, and you can just say, let's rotate it to 15 degrees and rotate it 15 more degrees. And for each of those different variations, go ahead and figure out what the energy performance is. Okay, so you can sort of figure out based on and what it's going to be, be uh, ultimately determined by is it's the amount of glazing facing the sun at different times of the day. Okay, and based on where you are on the earth, you know, sometimes you like more sun relative to the climate, sometimes you like less sun. It depends on whether you need to be doing more heating or doing more cooling. So it won't be all that far off from south, it's oriented pretty well. But let me try 15 degrees, 30 degrees. See if you can kind of come up with any recommendation about if there is a better orientation than to do south. Um, you can actually choose your location. Okay. Originally, I set it in San Jose. Honestly, in San Jose or Palo Alto or any of these areas like that, you don't really see a huge impact because we actually have an incredibly moderate climate here. That's pretty darn close. You may not believe it based on last night, but we have a pretty moderate climate that yeah, just is pretty close to a comfortable temperature year round. So if you want to be more dramatic about it, you know, put it in Boston, put it in Mumbai, put it, you know, put it in Dubai, put it someplace that has a more extreme climate, and you'll get a, a much more interesting set of recommendations based on that. Okay, so but just tell us where you did it. Okay. And then oh, what sort of materials would you recommend for the wall system, the roof system, and the window system? What happens is when you run the baseline analysis in the little report, which is not working today, you know, the whole web service is a little bit off today, I'm not sure what's going on there, but we'll try and figure that out for you. But there's a baseline set of assumptions. When you say it is a wall that plugs in some sort of default assumption about what a good wall would be for San Jose, which will be some woefully under-insulated wall that you could really do some improvement on. Okay. And what you want to do is use design alternatives to try well, how about a medium insulation wall? How about a really super insulated wall? And we really want you to look at the wall, the roof, and the windows and tweak the assumptions and see if you can come up with what you think is a really good balance between you know, all those different things to try and figure out really what's going to have the highest performance impact. Okay. Now, as you do that, we want you to actually sort of work with your construction manager to kind of really trade that off versus the cost of doing those things. Because you know, if it's going to cost us, oh, you know, another $30,000 to put super insulated walls in there, okay, but the lifetime energy savings, not just the yearly savings, but think about it over the whole 30-year life, okay, you know, if the lifetime energy savings is greater, super, we probably have a, you know, we should go with that. If it's only half of what that is, you have a more of an issue to discuss in terms of whether or not it's really worthwhile going ahead and doing that super insulation. Now, the analysis it's going to return to you is going to be strictly based on the cost, the, the energy operating cost savings. And there's a lot of other reasons you might still want to super insulate in terms of doing things like reducing the overall carbon footprint and just kind of the overall energy use. Or even now, we're really having to move towards net zero energy buildings. And that mandate's going to kick in and we'll have to really reduce things, even if it's not necessarily you know, the most cost effective thing to do. Okay, but there's other, you know, but we want you to kind of think about where you come in, like on that continuum, about how far you want to push it and how much you're willing to invest to make the energy savings happen. Okay, and for every team, it's going to be slightly different. Okay, so yeah, it's, it's a little bit of your own philosophy in there too. So go through, analyze the energy performance, assess the initial cost impact for these different things versus the uh, building life cycle energy savings. 
Okay. Also, the architect, they're going to have to be working with a structural engineer about this whole recommendation for what to do about these structural bracing elements. Okay, so if the structural engineer wants to put giant bracings in front of your windows, you might want to think about if you want to change your windows or if you're going to try and feature them architecture, what you're going to do. Okay, but at the end of the whole thing, you're going to update the building model to incorporate these things. So you're going to change the wall and roof assemblies to go ahead and kind of have the appropriate materials that you chose in your building performance package. And you're also going to go ahead and change any windows or do anything you need to do to kind of like uh, reflect the way your team is recommending doing the structural bracing. Hey, third task, our construction managers in the crowd get to do this. Okay, you're responsible for helping everyone else with the whole notion of the preliminary cost estimates for the building envelope as well as for the uh, structural system. So for these different things, we're going to go ahead and have you either create schedules in Revit or an Autodesk quantity takeoff. And you can really use either of them. It's a pretty simple set of numbers you have to come up with to basically figure out what the quantities are of those key elements. And those key elements are things like the amount of different wall surfaces, the amount of roof surface, the amount of glazing surface. Okay, so that we can go ahead and figure out what those quantities are, associate some sort of cost with those, and we can get those costs for, for lack of a better source, something like RS means, to kind of get some square footage costs, since we don't have a lot of historical data. That wouldn't be the way we'd like to do it. We'd like to have some historical data we can draw upon, but we'll use some uh, just kind of general source books for right now to give us some information. Okay, and at this point, really, you, know, you don't need to drill on down to doing a detailed construction estimate. Here we're really looking for this ballpark, this analysis of the design alternatives. So kind of keep it relatively high. It really is number of square feet by dollars per square feet. You don't really need to get, get down into the real detail of that, although you could drive it there as we go later. So you're supposed to be help out with the whole notion of really the cost for these different building envelope systems. So there's the baseline, you know, what the uh, EIFS wall system is designed by. And if they're saying, I want super insulated structural panels, help them come up with some sort of cost so that we can figure out what that change would make or require. Same thing on the structural system. On the structural system, that's a little rougher. Generally for structural systems, we tend to estimate steel just by like dollars per pound, okay? Because that's the way a lot of it's actually priced out. So if you can come up with some sort of dollars per pound and then help them work with their structural model, you can actually construct a schedule which shows the weight of all the steel in these elements, okay? We can actually come up with some sort of notion of really how much it's going to cost or how much we would save by optimizing the steel versus just going with a very uniform system across all the different levels, okay? The final thing our construction manager has to do is come up with a 4D simulation. And we're going to talk about that on Tuesday in terms of showing it. But the basic idea is you're going to put together a task timeline for the construction of the structure and putting the envelope on there. So that by that I mean you know, you're going to place the foundations, you're going to put some columns on it, put the beams on it, put the floors on it, and kind of build the skeleton. Okay, Then you're going to put the exterior walls and glazing and the roof on it. Okay, that's as far as you have to go. You don't really need to get into all the detail of all the interior pieces. And as you do that, we're really looking for, oh, it's, it's more like you know, 10 to 20 construction tasks. Okay, so when you do that, you're probably looking at, oh, the columns on level one, then the beams on level one, then maybe the joists on level one, then the floor, then the columns on level two. It's kind of at that level. You don't really need to get to an incredible amount of detail. But you'll want to think through what the appropriate sequencing is, and then ultimately we're going to show you how to map that to the model elements so you can do a 4D simulation. Okay, and actually, have you played around with 4D simulation that yet in like uh, in 241 or anything yet? Or yeah, so you okay. So we're going to show you some cool tricks to make it much easier, <laughs> and that's on Tuesday. So be sure to come for that. So what to submit at the end of all this? You really want to just sort of get some experience with sort of analyzing an existing building and really uh, proposing and assessing some enhancements to it. So your final product is, it's like an executive summary. I really want to see like two to three pages that really say, here are my team's recommendations for these things. The key framing elements at each floor level, okay? The locations for the structural bracing and really the materials to be used at the building envelope. You know, so it's really, that's what we're looking for. And if you want to do that textually or you want to do that with tables or whatever it is, just kind of keep it short and sweet, and here are our recommendations. 
at the tail end after that, you can supplement it with some appendices. So if in your structural analysis package you have, oh, you can produce some sort of document that looks like, oh, here was the column using the loads from the first floor versus here's the columns losing the, using the loads from the third floor. Okay, go ahead and just kind of put a couple of PDFs in there that sort of explain the detail behind what your recommendations were. Okay, same thing with the Green Building Studio stuff. There's uh, actually a very nice report that can be produced out of there where we can look at, here's the baseline energy performance, here's my new improved energy performance. So just showing that this is what the projected energy savings is between those things. Okay, and finally on the cost estimating side, or just some sort of little, either an Excel spreadsheet or just something you print up that basically just kind of shows really, you know, how you're driving these costs. You know, really, what were the calculations that were behind them? And, you know, again, these could be like, oh, you know, two to three pages on each of the different supplements, something like that. It's really, you know, don't go too deep into all this stuff. So the idea is to produce the report and then to also go ahead and give us back some revised models that include the changes so that show the structural framing in place, that show the structural bracing the way you wanted to put it, and that actually reflect sort of the, the window and bracing locations as well as the, the thickness of the walls based on what you'd actually recommended. And that's it. Okay, put it all together. So, yeah, if you actually think about breaking that down roll by roll, it's not an incredible a lot of amount of work. It's really, you know, there's, but it, it involves a little interaction and trading off and something like that. Because if you look at any individual task, any of those can be completed in a couple hours. It's really then just kind of getting you together and figure out what the trade-offs are. Kay. So let's stop there for a second and ask what you know questions or sort of makes sense or it's going to be due on. It's actually just before finals week, so we're staying out of finals week. But it's going to be you have till Sunday midnight before finals start. Okay, but. This is one of those ones I would knock out earlier if you can, just to kind of get it out of the way. And it can be. I think it's really one of those things, yeah, I don't know. If you can get it done earlier in the week, you're in better shape. So and again, the, the biggest hassle, I swear, the biggest hassle you're going to have is actually sort of getting together with teams and trying to put this all together. So go ahead and form teams for you. Yeah, it's not a long-term relationship. Hey, you look, you're, you're good enough for now. <laughs> yeah, come on over. <laughs> and yeah, we're going we're gonna to be together for a week here or something like that. So just go ahead and form someone. And again, go for like our complimentary interests that'll really help you out. So, so <laughs> do you know, e do you really know ETABs? Okay, good. That's all I need to know. <laughs> I know Navis works. We're going to be great together. Okay. <laughs> so uh, that's the idea. Yes. Yes. You can you can recommend and change it to whatever you like. Can we use the, the, the core of the elevators? Yes. Okay. Yeah. In fact, it was really sort of designed to be that way. That yeah. So we can make that an active structural element and kind of treat it like a big concrete core or something like that, and use that to help out with the bracing too. Okay. So really, you know, feel free to go ahead and push this as far as your structural analysis capabilities go in terms of really making it better and stuff like that. Just go ahead and, yeah, yeah be creative and stuff like that. This is your chance to kind of really, you know, make it the way you know you want it to be. If you're on the architecture side and you really hate where I put the windows, feel free to move them around and do something much more interesting. It's just, uh, you know, this is your chance to sort of make recommendations about how you'd like to see that building. As opposed to the way it is right now, it's, it's kind of that sort of developer building that got dropped down in a parking lot somewhere. It's not all that, in, it's, it's okay, but it's not all that interesting. Yeah, this is your chance to sort of you know, you know, illustrate your expertise in savoir faire and like yeah, making it a little bit better. So go ahead and like feel free to do that. Okay, but at the same time, don't start creating conceptual masses to go through and doing twisty, interesting, odd forms and stuff like that. Because although you may have it in you to create a much, much better design that's far more interesting, you may not have the time to do it between now and then. So that's not the expectation. Yeah, keep it simple so you can sort of survive. Because in about another week or so, we're going to be done with all this. <laughs> that's, you know, like, you know, so keep the end in sight. Okay, you don't have to like uh, really uh, go deep bending on this thing. Okay. Any other questions about getting going? Okay, that's enough to get going. So please, you have to break or after class or sometime today, go ahead and put yourself in one of these categories in terms of the, the task role, and we'll see how well they bounce out. Yes? In terms of analysis for structural gravity restrictions or for collaborative analysis, like earthquake wing or something? 
actually, when I did it originally, I just sort of thought about doing it from a gravity standpoint. Okay. But again, yeah, push it as far as you want to in terms of that. The expectation, yeah, I don't expect you to look at the eight different loading cases and try and figure it all out. But you know, if, you, if you're good at doing lateral system analysis and can easily apply a load and kind of see what happens and sort of verify that you're bracing on, yeah, I'm all for that. Just, uh, yeah, but <laughs> it's like, you know, since, since people have such a varying level, yeah, and we, ha we have everything from freshmen who know very, or just getting started with the whole building process to graduate structural engineers and the thing, yeah, I have to keep it really loose in terms of what the expectation is. So, so perform at your level. Okay, and that'll be okay. Okay, any other questions? No, you're in pretty good shape? Okay, if they are doing good there, let's go ahead and we'll leave that hanging out there and instead go ahead and turn our attention uh, back to doing a little bit of uh, kind of uh, estimating.